Now the stall creates fear, intimidation, and causes some cooks to freak out. If you're an amateur cook, you could catch yourself going into full lockdown mode and even having nightmares about the stall. It prolongs the cooking process. If you're in a competition and you encounter the stall, you might be done. If you're at home in the backyard and encounter a big stall, you might have an angry mob of family and friends yelling and screaming at you, when's the food gonna be ready? They wanna eat and then socialize. Trust me on this, not the other way around. I've been there, done that. What's up barbecue lovers, Arnie Tex here. Kinda had the urge to get back into the Pro Tip Studio, so here we are. Wanted to share something about the dreaded stall. And to be precise today, we're referring to the brisket stall. Now what is this stall exactly? In the simplest form, this is the way I see the stall, and this hopefully will help you understand what it is. Basically, the brisket is cold on the inside, You've got hot fire and smoke on the outside, trying to get in. At some point, the cold is trying to get out, and as it slowly but surely escapes, it cools the exterior surface of the meat. But think about it like this. The hot's trying to get in, the cold's trying to get out, they bump in the middle, and they're stuck, and nobody wants to give in. It goes this way, that way. Occasionally, you even may go down a couple of degrees in temperature. That's when the Cold is winning, and some, at some point, it starts to go the other way around. So today we're gonna go over and explain basically exactly what the brisket stall is. And we're gonna go over a few tips to overcome, avoid, and or minimize the stall, depending on your situation. Some stalls last 30 minutes, some last up to four hours. Just really depends how cold your brisket was when you put it in there. Depends on how hot your fire is when you put it in there. So those are some of the factors that you need to consider to either help minimize and or avoid the stall altogether. The stall basically refers to the temperature stalling or stopping from climbing within the brisket. Another way to think of the stall is, you know, and, and a good way to kind of understand it is like, when you're hot, your body sweats. That sweat cools the surface of your skin. The stall basically is a sweat that is cooling the exterior of the brisket while the heat is still trying to get inside, cook and render your meat. At some point, the heat eventually overcomes that evaporative cooling process and the heat begins to break down the collagen and the connective tissue and create that delicious, succulent, juicy, wonderful brisket that we all love so much. First thing I like to do is to let the brisket rest on the counter or on a table. If I'm at a cook-off, it's in my trailer counter for a couple or three or maybe even four hours. That really depends on ambient temperature in the room where you have the brisket. One of the things that resting it on the counter for a couple or three hours is it allows the brisket to loosen up a little bit, become a little more uh, pliant, and it allows some of the cold inside the brisket to begin to temp up a little bit. You don't want it freezing cold inside when you put it in the smoker. Some cooks like to say that you must put the brisket in the smoker when it's cold in order to obtain a really nice smoke ring. I'm gonna say number one, it's not totally necessary to be totally cold. I like to put it in there when it's cool and achieve the same results, uh, but it's not totally necessary to put it in right out of the refrigerator straight into the smoker. Leave it outside for a little while and let it rest. Now in regard to that smoke ring, if you're cooking at home in the backyard, it's not really probably that big a deal unless you're trying to impress your friends. At a competition, it's kind of important to have that. Now we have other tricks to create that smoke ring at a cook-off, so it's not that big a deal either to allow your brisket to sit out on the counter and rest a little while. And you'll still be able to, at a competition, be able to wow those judges with a beautiful smoke ring. Now if you happen to encounter this stall and you do have to engage it, this is how I suggest you can counter that. You must, number one, keep your heat consistent Keep your fire going. Do not let your temperature come down too, too low. Generally, the stall is gonna give the ghost up somewhere between 175 and 180. Sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher. Again, those factors of what temperature you started at, what temperature you're maintaining, are gonna be uh, factors that affect the, the length of time the stall is and at what temperature the stall is gonna quit stalling. Now, some people like to wrap around 165 or 170. 
This helps speed up the cooking process, it helps minimize the stall, and it also helps retain more moisture within your brisket. And it slows down and or stops a lot quicker the evaporative cooling process. I very rarely experience a stall, particularly in my competition cooking. This is another way to combat the stall. Start at a very high temperature. I've always started cooking at about 350 to 400 degrees. That's when I start my cooking process. I used to own a barbecue smoker that would not cook under 300 to 350 degrees. It almost always, with even a little bit of fire, started at 400, my cooking process. And so I actually learned how to cook cotton fast on that smoker, not by choice, but because I had to, and I was already competing with it, I had to learn how to cook hot. And lo and behold, something I realized and learned during that cooking process with that particular cooker is that I very rarely experienced the stall. It just seems like when you start really hot, you get the exterior of that brisket warm, it begins to push that heat into the meat quicker, and it forces that cold inside the brisket to give up a little bit quicker, if it even stalls at all. I guarantee you, if you rest it on the counter for a little while, a couple hours, start a little bit hot, you're gonna have very little or no stall whatsoever. However, you don't wanna cook at 400 degrees all the way through. At some point, once you overcome that stall, you really wanna start slowing your temperature down. I always start hot, slow it down a little bit, and I finish slow to 75 to 300, no more than three for sure. That's how I cook my brisket. Very rarely do I encounter a stall. Very rarely do I ever have to combat that stall. My competition briskets are usually on at seven in the morning and done about one in the afternoon. Now keep in mind friends that I've been cooking for about 20 years competitively and longer than that in the backyard. So over time and through a lot of trial and error practice, I've learned how to combat and overcome and or completely avoid that stall. And I just wanna encourage you to cook and practice more often. And at some point you'll kind of figure out the rhythm on your smoker, your grill, your cooker, and you'll figure out if you follow some of these tips, how to avoid or minimize that stall altogether. Happy family, happy friends, happy wins at a competition sometimes. That's pretty much it, it's fairly simple. Rest your brisket on the counter for a while, run a consistent fire, start hot, let it come down slow, but definitely stay consistent. Hot air in, cold air trying to get out, at some point, the hot wins. That's pretty much it for today, friends. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a barbecue lover that loves barbecue just as much as you do. Keep the smoke light, make it work. Bye.